Hey guys, today I'm continuing my test of the Windsor Newton pigment markers. Um, my portrait set came in from Dick Blick. It only took him like a month and a half. Um, and I went ahead and swatched the colors from both ends. I'm not really a big fan of the plastic case these come in. It's not very secure. It's kind of a waste. Um, and I may be ditching that case soon enough. We'll see. And um, to test out this portrait portrait set, I have a portrait of Kara right here that I, oh, that I'm going to um, render for you guys today. Sorry, I saw the red on my bandage uh, from earlier today when I was messing with Copics, and I thought I was bleeding again. And I was like, no, no, I just want my finger to heal. I'm very tired of it being down and out for the count. Um, the paper I'm using is um, an acrylic paper. It's made for acrylics. It has a light texture. It's got a rubber or a plastic coating on it. And I guess I'm going to use both the white blender and the colorless blender to blend these colors. I don't really think the um, the whites that come in this set, I mean sorry, the skin tones that come in this set are very, oh that doesn't work. It's probably the paper because this is not at all marker paper. I was just thinking um, it might help but since it can't push the marker through I'm gonna have to rely more on the white blender to lighten things up and I guess we'll find out together how many layers of that this can take And um, I'm looking for a piece of scrap paper because the Windsor Newton pigment markers kind of reactivate Mitsuo Ida ink. They are the only alcohol based markers I've encountered that do that. Um, and uh, I've used other things on this kind of paper without that issue. Although I have not used Copic markers on this paper yet. So they might be an issue for this as well. Really, I like using this paper for um, things that might otherwise get torn up by repeated layering. And these markers do not come with a brush tip. They have a chisel nib and a bullet nib. and. Um, I really hate the bullet nib on these, so I'm using the chisel nib instead. And it's already difficult for me to get even coverage without, um, let me pull in, even coverage. Uh, I'm going to have to test these again on the Windsor Newton paper that Windsor Newton sent me. Uh, and that was a care of Windsor Newton. I didn't have to buy that paper. So thank you, Windsor Newton. I'm, uh, I've already done some inking on it, and I really like the paper. It's very smooth. The reason I'm messing around with this is um, I'd already drawn and inked something on it. The markers were not care of Windsor Newton, they were care of Becca Hilburn, and that's me. So I guess I'm free to use whatever paper I so desire or think will work. This paper is not a paper that will work. So add uh, Strathmore canvas paper to the nope. File. 
and the color I'm using right now is Light Sienna. It's one of their lighter skin tones in the Skin Tone Pack. The Skin Tone Pack comes with a uh, Burnt Umber, uh, Burnt Umber Light, Parchment, Light Sienna, and Portrait Pink. And a White Colorless Blender. And I don't really know why they include the White Colorless Blender because um, you're probably going to be have bought one prior because that's kind of like the best thing about these markers is the white colorless blender and I was really hoping for more movement but no and what's neat about the white colorless blender is you can build up layers of white which is something that was kind of previously unheard of with um, alcohol based markers and these are alcohol based markers unfortunately I'm having a really hard time with them I probably should have colored in her whole face instead of trying to blend these out but that's okay you guys are not unused to watching me fail on camera I fail on camera a lot. These can be layered. Layering them does result in a darker color. Uh, the chisel nib makes it difficult to do um, nuanced applications of color. Your choices are you can cover large areas quickly or uh, and somewhat sloppily or you can cover you can do fine details there is no in-between. I would really love to see Winsor Newton introduce um, a brush tip for these. I know they already have something like that available because they recently acquired ProMarker and they are working on rebranding that. So uh, I, I request that you hold your judgment on these markers because this is not the right kind of paper for it. It's just a tougher paper that um, would be less prone to, to pilling, which was one of the issues I was having when I was doing the big batch of tests based on uh, rendering a bouquet. I had a lot of trouble rendering that bouquet because the paper, well, I don't, there are a lot of different reasons, but the paper was one of them. I was another one of them. So if I had been smart, I would have built up this area and I'm probably going to do so, and we'll see how terrible that looks. It's okay if it looks terrible, because this is that's what tests are for. I was complaining about Winsor Newton. Um, the people they hire to talk about their markers, to represent their markers, they act like they've never seen alcohol-based markers before, and they very well might not have, because all of the qualities that they talk about are things that are common in every alcohol marker on the market today. Um, and they neglect to talk about the things that are actually exciting about these markers. Um, these markers are twin-tipped. One side is a chisel nib, the other side is a bullet nib, my least favorite com uh, configuration. Um, I've talked about that in other videos, though. And I am currently working with a port the portrait set that I'd ordered from Dick Blick, and it took forever to come in, but it's finally made it. And I'm not super excited about what I'm producing, but that's okay. You guys are not strangers to watching me fail on camera. This is not the paper that is designed to be used with these markers, so please don't hold, um, don't judge these markers based on this test. Let's do several other tests together and see how that goes before we, we pass judgment. Although I will say I'm not super impressed by the colors in the white skin tone set, I mean the six piece skin tone set. I do uh, appreciate that they are trying to represent a wide variety of skin tones in only six colors. So um, kudos to Windsor and Newton for recognizing that people come in more skin tones than pale. So some of the things I really like about these markers that I think 
are really innovative as a marker user and someone who has used markers for 10 plus years is um, first of all these markers are pigment based they're not dye based so they're going to be more light fast than your dye based markers they're going to be less um, color fugitive that means your color should look the same in 10 years 15 years 20 years 100 years as they do today um, I haven't done any tests on that, so I don't know. I haven't done any tests on that yet, so I don't know. Um, another thing that's interesting is they're slightly, some of the colors are slightly opaque, which is very unusual for alcohol-based markers. Another thing that's unusual about these markers is that you can add water and activate them, move them around. They aren't just moved with um, alcohol blender, although the alcohol blender isn't working on this acrylic paper that I'm using today for this kind of crummy looking drawing but that's because this has like a plastic coating on it and that's not meant that's not it's not meant to be used that way um, which was why I said don't judge this paper based on I mean don't judge these markers based on today's performance oh did you see this this marker is I just uncapped this. It's been under pretty normal pressure. It's leaking all over the place. That's not good. No, not good. These markers also have a white blender, which is really unusual for um, alcohol-based markers. And when I say they have a white blender, what I mean by that is they have a white pin that can be used to add um, small increments of opaque white to your creation. I really like this white blender. I've been using it on everything but these because um, I think it's really cool. It's something I haven't seen before. Uh, no other companies are doing it, so I really don't understand why the people who get paid to talk about this aren't talking about that. As a marker user, it, that's the sort of stuff that really intrigues me as you can see um, sh I should switch over to the bullet nib for doing freckles I think I was gonna say the chisel nib is not good for freckles but then again the bullet nib makes the freckles so uniform that they don't look at all like they should Uh, another thing I have, um, a, another small gripe I have with the portrait set is that it doesn't come with any colors that are good for shading portraits. I feel like they should have left out the color, the white blender, because most people who are collecting these markers will have purchased a white blender early on, because that's one of the selling points. And um, they should have instead included uh, maybe a shadow color. Oh, here's another one that wants to leak. Since these are alcohol based, I would think they would be somewhat compatible with Copic markers, but I would recommend you apply your Copics first and then you do your pigment markers because I have a feeling the pigments and the pigment markers might um, clog up or ruin the nibs on your Copic markers. The case I'm using, um, you can't really see it, but the case I'm using is um, a Utrecht marker case. Pretty generic. I got it on super sale. Yeah, this paper does not blend. We're going to have to do another test on a paper that does blend, but that's okay. I just wanted to try this out and see. At least with the white, it will tone down colors and you can put oh I got pink on it from doing her lips that's gonna be a pain in the butt to fix um I was saying something oh well I guess it's not all that important <laughs> I'll probably remember it when I end the video oh 
Oh, I'll probably be revisiting these markers really soon using the pa the marker paper that Windsor Newton sent me. In general, I like to work on um, like cardstock or um, just heavier papers in general for my marker illustrations because I like to saturate the paper. I like there to be like um, a heavy kind of rendered look, I guess, is what you could call it. Um, you can't do that with these because the pigments are not going to move around at all. That was one of the reasons why I uh, opted to use an acrylic paint pad. And you can build up these colors, but they get intense very quick. They start to look really unnatural, in my opinion. Uh, some of you might like that look. Some of you might um, prefer to work that way. And if that's the case, you're going to like it, these markers. If that's not the case, if you like to do subtle color building, then uh, that's just something to watch out for. You can kind of knock it back with the colorless blend, I mean the white blender. When you apply color on top of the white areas that you've blended with the white blender, um, they aren't going to be as intense as they would have been if you hadn't applied it. There is a slight resist there. It's not as bad as if you'd used um, like white ink or white Signo. So this might be a good solution for you if you want to make minor corrections or to knock something back in intensity. Not all the markers are uniformly opaque. Some of them are more opaque than others. It's probably based on the pigments used. I don't currently have a guide for opacity. Um, Windsor Newton may release one soon. It seems like that would be something beneficial for them to release for their customers. Here's another marker that is leaky. Think we're going to encounter a real test here as I try to block in the hair. As you can see, it's already pretty streaky, but um, subsequent layers should help remedy that. It's also difficult to get into some of those tight corners. Hair and eyes um, are definitely areas that would benefit a lot from a brush a flexible brush nib, sort of like what Copic or Prismacolor or Shinhan or um, some of the water-based markers, like distress markers. There's a lot of markers that utilize a flexible uh, brush nib. I would be very excited to see Windsor Newton introduce that, although I've already kind of put together a collection uh, just because I was so excited about the product and how different it was, despite how it was being kind of misrepresented to me. Um, I did my own research and found out a lot about it. And uh, the nibs get worn down kind of quickly, it seems like. Uh, I'm curious to know, uh, these are not refillable, but you might be able to replace the nibs with um, maybe like a Copic nib. They might fit. I might have to test that later on. Might end up with a ruined marker, but at the rate this is going, uh, my nib is going to be ruined anyway, so it doesn't matter. You need to be careful when recapping, especially the chisel nib, because there's um, like a little plastic ring on the inside of the cap that I'll show you guys as soon as I'm done blocking in her eyes here um, and it can like cut up or chop up your nib you're kind of ruining it so that's something to be aware of 
And on this paper, these inks are very sticky. Okay, let me show you the inside ring. See that? That will start chopping up your nib if you're not very careful. It's very easy to put your nib in the wrong place. It's also going to be very hard to do highlights in this hair with a bullet nib and a chisel nib. Neither of them are designed to be um, delicate. And I am trying to use the different planes of the nib to the chisel nib to try and make it work for me. Some companies make really nice chisel nibs. Um, I really like Prismacolors, for example. But those are only available on their bullet nibbed markers. They call those the art markers, and they have a different name for the brush nib markers, and that doesn't make any sense to me because um, why would you call one art? Why, <laughs> what, what's the justification for that? Other than um, the bullet nib markers have been around for, I mean, the yeah, the bullet and chisel nib markers have been around for a really long time, so they probably had that name first. But I noticed there's kind of um, like a distinction an arbitrary one between products for artists. So these are being currently marketed uh, given who Winsor Newton hires to represent these markers for the most part by um, like fine artists and um, older illustrators. And um, like what comic artists or cartoonists do. And I think that's a shame because for markers at least, we and us and graffiti artists are like your big audience. We're the ones who are really going to buy your product. We're the ones who are really going to push your product. We're the ones who are going to tell our friends about your product and other aspiring artists because we see them all the time at shows and stuff. We, we talk to them, I think, more than um, artists who are considered fine artists might talk to their, their following. So I don't understand why why I have the distinction in who you're going to have represent you. I'm already getting some pilling on this paper. It's um tearing, I'm trying to be careful too. It's tearing up something. It could be uh, just like digging into the pigments that I've already laid down. I currently don't have as big a set as I need to really <clears throat> be able to do all of the color gradation <coughs> on a paper that's better designed for blending that might actually be less of an issue and I'm trying to hit it with the prior color I used as while it's still wet so I can get it to blend out a little bit and do something a little less um, something that doesn't stand out as much. I wish I could recommend um, an inking pen that works. Uh, there's only been a couple of problem areas with my Mitsuo Ida 
and that thing works with like everything it works with watercolors it works um it's worked on this kind of paper before i used it to ink that amaterasu uh mini painting i did the other night on canvas that i inked with poskas i mean it's like a tough a tough ink i wish it was commonly available in the u.s right now i can only find one source that carries it and that's jet pins if you decide to check it out based on my recommendation, please let them know. Please like drop them a line that it where you heard about it from. That would really help me out a lot. But the Mitsuo Ida does not work with uh, I haven't found anything yet that works with the pigment markers for uh, synthetic papers like Yupo. And I'm surprised it's working as well on this canvas paper as it is. My initial notes said that these markers are like working with gouache in um, a marker form, and that's true to an extent. I actually think Posca markers are more like working with gouache in a marker form, but these are a very close second. So if that's something you're looking for, um, especially because these can supposedly be blended out with water. And I'll, I'll have to try that. It would not, I think this would be the kind of paper to do that on because it's, um, a coated paper made for acrylic. So it's meant not to get pill all, um, torn up and bent in waterlogged when you do add water. So I may do another illustration that demonstrates how well these do or do not work. I haven't tested it yet with water, but the rep at Windsor Newton told me it they are um, water blendable, water soluble, which is interesting because I've never encountered a an alcohol marker that can do that. See, you'd think that would be, especially because they do so much with watercolors and they have their new line of watercolor markers and stuff. You would think that would be something they mention. But I haven't seen anyone mention that yet. Certainly not anybody who's on their payroll mention it yet. If I'm wrong, please link me because I'd love to see people working with it in that capacity. That might help me make some better decisions when I'm using them instead of having to make a bunch of mistakes on camera for you guys. I'd rather somebody else make all of the mistakes and get paid to make all the mistakes and I can just learn from and look really good like I'm a genius than have to be the one to make all the mistakes and be the one making the mistakes on my own dime. Trying to get into those hair ends. So on this paper, it doesn't blend so much as it layers really well. And I think I'm going to use Potter's Pink to kind of hash in a bit of a fake background. We'll see. My <clears throat> another leaky marker. Very leaky marker. That's not good. And Potter's Pink is actually a very, a very dark red, not really a good pink. So I might regret this. We'll find out.
once I finish doing all of my tests, or the lion's share of my pigment marker tests, you can read all about my thoughts at uh, natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P, dot blogspot dot com. You can also check out um, my art in general there, and I have six years worth of art supply reviews, tutorials, um, convention prep information. watercolors, uh, my creation process, comic making process. I have a lot, a lot of stuff on there that I would appreciate you guys checking out and letting me know what you think. I am having a hard time lightening up this potter's pink. It's not going so well. Um, and the other nice thing about their blendable white is you can layer it to build up opacity. So, um, let it dry and then hit those offensive areas again and suddenly you have a much whiter white. But make sure you clean your, your nibs on a piece of scratch paper, otherwise the pigment that it picks up will carry over the next place you put it, like in Kara's eye. You can also go back in and darken some of the areas, even over the white. So that's my test of um, the Windsor Newton portrait set on Strathmore um, acrylic canvas paper. Uh, I'm Becca Hilburn. Uh, this has been a video. <laughs> Please comment, like, like, subscribe, share it with your friends. All of those things really help me out a whole lot, especially while I'm working on building up a YouTube audience. And uh, have a good day, guys. Bye.